as it happens, you know, and you know, fairly relevant to to <coughs> that time because I and to what Jimmy Savile was doing because he was the his job, I mean, the you know the, he was uh, presenting Top of the Pops, he was doing BBC shows and one sort and another. Uh, had Jim will fix it was a show where the youngsters wrote in and said we want something um, arranged with what we wanted to do and um, I'd done that show a couple of times so yeah I wouldn't say I knew him because I just found him unapproachable this was not a human being you know it's, just, it's a caricature some strange caricature but and it's already been said in the paper so I'm not taking any great risk of us any um, anybody in that era just sort of uh, we know he's doing he's up to something he just had a reputation of being I think a groper really I don't think I'd certainly never heard any anything about that I mean the most awful aspect which is the idea of molesting kids in hospital I mean that is just unbelievable you know and sort of bribing his way out of it by giving a million pounds to the hospital and that's, that, that is staggering but the idea that youngsters um, were p a bit of a prey. Uh, we, we, everybody knew that, which is why it's so extraordinary that there's any sort of mystery. And when the ex-head of BBC, uh, Mark Thompson, the other week said, well, it's the first time I've heard it. I don't know anything about it. You think, <laughs> head of BBC and you don't know that? Don't be ridiculous, you know. Just, it, it, that's absolute nonsense. So, no, I wasn't surprised at all. Mm -hmm. And obviously the surprise is in a sense that, that that didn't happen years ago and what is it about the who and the establishment or whatever it is I don't know that decided to keep it all quiet and give him an OBE I mean he's a friend of uh, not an OBE a knighthood I'm sorry um, you know he was to a certain amount a friend of royalty as well you know. it's, no it's no it could be one bit last the only the only and this is not a mitigating circumstance, <coughs> obviously, but the only thing I will say, which hasn't been said very much, it is occasionally in the things I've read, um, is that that was a time in history and television and radio and live shows and so on and so forth, where the sort of naive groupie scene, I think I'd call it, because I don't think... I don't think the girls were incredibly promiscuous, certainly not the younger ones, but frankly, when you get a bit higher up, you know, I don't know, 17, 18, something like that, then, yeah, there were people who just hung, hang around, hung around after gigs and tried to get to the stars or the disc jockey or whatever. I mean, it's, you know, I've got a booby prize, though, if you went for, you know, I don't know, some Cliff Richard or something and ended up with um, Jimmy Savile. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think it took so long to come to light? I have no idea. I, d I don't know why it took so long. That's what I'm curious about is, you know, whether there is somewhere in, in Britain some sort of censorship committee that we don't know about who suppresses these things and somebody gets together in a room and, and says, you know, well, we better hadn't said, we all know about Jimmy, but come on, he was a friend of Prince Charles. I mean, it looked awfully bad on Prince Charles and we start saying he was a bit of a perv, wouldn't it? And somebody decides, yes, you're quite right, we'll keep it quiet, you know, nobody will ever find out. Uh, um, I don't know who that would be then. I really don't know who that would be, you know. 